Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Stephen County Library. Welcome to Library Connections. Our Library Connections number 125. This is the Friday, December 9th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in as usual with the top five fiction bestsellers for the week from the New York Times. At number one, A World of Curiosities by Louise Penny. The 18th book in the Chief Inspector Gamache series. When an attic room that was sealed off 160 years ago is opened, an old enemy returns. At number two, It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. In the sequel to It Ends With Us, Lily deals with her jealous ex-husband as she reconnects with her first boyfriend. At number three, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number four, Verity, also by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series. She uncovers a horrifying truth. And at number five, The Boys from Biloxi by John Grisham. Two childhood friends follow in their father's footsteps which puts them on opposite sides of the law. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, The Light We Carry by Michelle Obama. The former first lady shares personal stories in the tools she uses to deal with difficult situations. At number two, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing by Matthew Perry. The actor, known for playing Chandler Bing on Friends, shares stories from his childhood and his struggles with sobriety. At number three, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. The actress and filmmaker describes her eating disorders and difficult relationship with her mother. At number four, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. And at number five, Surrender by Bono. The lead singer of the Irish rock band U2 offers details of his life career, and activism. Our first recommended read for this week is the new C.J. Tudor collection, A Sliver of Darkness, Stories. Several slivers of darkness, actually. After a handful of top-flight thrillers, Tudor publishes her first short story collection, and it's a glorious book. The plot seems simple enough. There's a murder on a cruise ship. A jazz singer reacts rather extremely to his girlfriend leaving him for another guy. Kids find something scary in an abandoned apartment complex in Nottingham, England. But it's what Tudor does with her material that makes the story special. None of them go where we think they will. There's always some twist, some change in direction that makes us sit up in surprise or shock. The author gives us robust characters, pitch-perfect dialogue, and a narrative style that hints at something unsettling lurking beneath even the calmest of surfaces. The stories defy easy categorization. There's horror here as well as sci-fi and thrillers. But there are other elements, too, 
sometimes blending genres. The book is a showcase for Tudor, who demonstrates her imagination and narrative range spectacularly. And that's the book list review. And this is the perfect book for this busy time of year because you can sit down and read one short story and then have plenty of time to do everything else you've got going on in your life. Moving on to our second recommended read of the week, it's the new poetry collection by Joy Harjo, the Poet Laureate of the United States. It's called Weaving Sundown in a Scarlet Light, 50 Poems for 50 Years. Harjo's patient guidance, mastery of form, and emotional depth are on dazzling display in these 50 poems drawing from 50 years of her poetry career. Her sensitivity towards the human experience is everywhere evident, especially in Bird for jazz saxophonist Charlie Parker, in which she writes, I've always had a theory that some of us are born with nerve endings longer than our bodies, arriving at an indelible insight. All poets understand the final uselessness of words. We are chords to other chords to other chords, if we're lucky, to melody. She revisits this idea in creation story, remarking, I am ashamed. I never had the words to carry a friend from her death to the stars correctly, or the words to keep my people safe from drought or gunshot. Eagle poem captures Harjo's interest in the natural world and cycles, opening to pray you open your whole self to sky, to earth, to sun, to moon, to one whole voice that is you. Harjo connects with the human family and the earthly and spiritual realms in poems that sparkle with generosity and brilliance. And that's the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. Moving on to our first audiobook recommendation of the week, it's called American Sirens, the incredible story of the black men who became America's first paramedics, written by Kevin Hazard. The audio is read by Gilbert Glenn Brown. Journalist and former paramedic Hazard paints a riveting portrait of Freedom House EMS a pioneering group of black paramedics in 1970s Pittsburgh. Expertly contextualizing the group's achievements within the contentious racial climate and archaic medical practices of the era. Hazard spotlights medic John Moon, who loved Angela Davis and the Afro, but who was polite almost to the point of deference. Peter Safar, an emigre Austrian anesthesiologist, inspired by his 11-year-old daughter's death from an asthma attack, to reimagine ambulance services and paramedic training. At Freedom House Medical Director Nancy Caroline, who was tapped by Safar to revamp his training program. Hazard explains how the 1966 death of former Pittsburgh Mayor David Lawrence highlighted the inadequacy of ambulance care provided by the city's police department, which also had an acrimonious relationship with residents of Pittsburgh's predominantly African-American neighborhood, the Hill District. He also documents Freedom House's battles with a stubborn mayor and police leaders and the stirring stories of black paramedics who developed methods now used by ambulance departments around the world. The result is a fascinating and deeply rewarding study of triumph 
in the face of adversity. And that's the Star Publishers Weekly Review. Moving on to our second audiobook recommendation of the week. It's historical fiction. It's called The Call of the Wrens by Jenny L. Walsh. The audio is read by Fiona Hardingham. Walsh offers an enticing story of two English women serving their country during both world wars. In 1917, Marian Hoxton ages out of the orphanage she was raised in and joins the Women's Royal Naval Service, known as the Wrens, while her best friend, Eddie Smith, joins the Royal Navy. As they each make their way towards the front lines in France, their friendship develops into romance. Meanwhile, Marion works as a dispatch rider and helps her new friend Sarah train carrier pigeons to send and receive messages. In a parallel narrative set in 1940, well-to-do Evelyn Fairchild joins the Wrens, desperate to prove she's overcome a childhood disability impacting one of her legs by serving as a motorcycle driver. Evelyn and Marion's paths cross when Marion returns to be a leader in the new Wrens, her romance with Eddie having turned out not as they'd hoped. Marion also harbors a secret about Evelyn's true parentage. As Evelyn's parents failed to disclose, she was adopted. Walsh expertly contrasts the lives of orphaned Marion with privileged Evelyn to expose their common desire to show their value outside societal labels. Historical fiction fans will be riveted. So if you're a historical fiction fan and you like character development, this is a good one to put on your reading list. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, which offers weekly and monthly recommendations. You can even sign up to receive an email when there's a new post. The Tech and Book Talk blog, which is seen at the left side of the screen, is found at ssctech.com. You can also check out the back catalog of Library Connections videos found on the Southeast Devon County Library's YouTube page. So just visit YouTube and then type in Southeast Devon County Library and you'll find our list of videos. Moving on to our next section, next week at the library, we'll take a brief look at the events and activities hosted by the library for the week ahead of us. And this time out, that's the week of December 12th through the 16th, 2022. Wow, we're in mid-month already. I can never believe it. But I digress. You can find information about the library's events and activities online as well. Simply visit the library's website found at ssclibrary.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see located near the top of the page. And on a registration note, registration is required for programs, unless otherwise specified, or unless the program is of the online on-demand variety, in which case, please just help yourself. You can register for programs through the library's website, through the calendar of events, by dropping by the library, or by giving us a call at area code 607-936-3700. On Monday, December 12th, we have one program at the library. It's Crafting with Kimberly Holiday Cork Decorations. This program does require registration and it runs from 5.30 to 7 p.m. on the 12th. On Tuesday, December 13th, we have a whole host of programs at the library. We kick things off with Adult Scrabble from 9 to 11 a.m. Scrabble is held in the library's reading room. From 9.15 to 10.15 a.m., it's the first of the ESL programs for the week. It's called Coffee, Tea, and English Vocabulary. And ESL, of course, stands for Programs for Adult Learners of English, or English as a Second Language. 
and I'm digressing. Coffee, Tea, and English Vocabulary is a hybrid program held both at the library in person and via Zoom. Then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., we have Story Time with Miss Sue, which is held in the Children's Department at the library. And from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., it's our second Coffee, Tea, and English program of the week, Conversation, which again is a hybrid program being held both at the library and via Zoom. Moving on to our afternoon and evening programs on the 13th, from 3 to 4.30 p.m., we have GATLAS, which stands for Gay at the Library After School. This is a partnership program between the library and Planned Parenthood of Greater New York. Your host for this program and this series, because this is a weekly program, is Carmen Greco of Planned Parenthood of Greater New York. This program offers a safe and supportive space for youth to talk about gender, sexuality, and what's going on in their lives. It's open to anyone ages 11 through 18 and held every Tuesday from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Then from 6 to 7 p.m. we have an event that is full, but if you already signed up for it, I'll tell you about it. And if you haven't signed up for it, you might be interested in future events. It's the Junior Chef Series. Our December Junior Chef is Christmas Cookie Decorating. And this series has two parts to it. You come and pick up your creation kit at the library between 6 and 7 p.m., in this case around on December 13th. And then you go home with your kit, and at your convenience, you access the online part of this program, and you create whatever the creation of the month is. In this case, for December, of course, it's Christmas cookie decorating. So if you've got young people at home that like to create, you can check the schedule for upcoming Junior Chef programs. It's a monthly program. And register for once for January, February, March, etc. at your convenience. Moving on to Wednesday, December 14th. Our first program of the day is Miss Sue's Preschool Storytime, which is held in the Children's Department at the library between 10 and 10.30 a.m. Then from noon to 1 p.m., it's LSC Author Talk with Nicole Eustace, who will be discussing her nonfiction title, Covered with Night, A Story of Murder and Indigenous Justice in Early America. This is an online program, and to register, you visit the library's website, found at ssclibrary.org. Click on the calendar link, and then when the December calendar comes up, look at December 14th and click on the second program there, which you'll see at near the top of your screen. It says LSC Author Talk. That, of course, is just a picture, but it should look just like that on the website. And when you click on the title of the program, the registration page will come up, and you'll be able to access the link. From 1 to 3 p.m. on Wednesday the 14th, we have our weekly Meijong session, which will be held in the library's reading room. Then from 3 to 4.30 p.m., it's Atlas, which is at the library after school. This is a drop-in program for young adults. There will be a different craft each week, and you just drop in, and your hostess, Kayla Crane, will help you create whatever the craft of the week is. Then from 6 to 8 p.m., it's the weekly Corning Adult Writers Group, which is a hybrid program held both at the library and via Zoom. On Thursday, December 15th, our first program of the day is a drop-in program. From 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., it's Kids Explore Homeschool Group Ice Skating. The location is the Civic Center Plaza Rink, and between 10 and 3, homeschoolers can skate for a discounted admission of only $2. You can bring your own skates or rent a pair for only $1. This program is a partnership program between the library and the City of Corning Parks and Recreation Department. And then from 10 to 11.30 a.m., it's Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club. This is a hybrid program being held both at the library in person and via Zoom. And then from 6 to 7 p.m., we have another to-go event that is full. This is December Tween to Go Clay Pot Tree Ornaments. If you've already registered for this program, you want to drop by the library between 6 and 7 p.m., pull up outside our Tioga Avenue entrance, and a staff member will be out there to give you your creation kit. And if you've got tweens at home that like to create, as I mentioned previously, 
check our calendar of events for upcoming tween to go events. On Friday, December 16th, from 1 to about 1.20 p.m., we have the debut of the new Library Connections video, which, if you're listening and watching this, you'll know is a weekly Readers and Listeners Advisory video cast. It makes its debut Fridays on Facebook and YouTube. And then from 4 to 6.30 p.m., it's the Teen Dungeons & Dragons, led by Dungeon Master Jason. This gathering is suitable for ages 13 through 17. This is a repeating program. All levels of experience are welcome in this safe space, and you are welcome to come to one or all gatherings. Registration is required. And briefly, here are our library programs contacts. If you have questions about any library programs, let us know. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.